Hello everyone. So in the last episode we made it so that we have an inventory which we can cycle through, but we want to be able to select things from our inventory. So even though right now we can choose which object to cause to fall from the sky by using the mouse wheel, we want to actually have a pop-up window that has an inventory selection on it. So there's a couple of things we need to do with that. The most complicated thing about this is the fact that we're trying to select three-dimensional objects. And now if you're trying to do three-dimensional objects um, in a menu, you have to have a three-dimensional menu, or you have to print the three-dimensional objects to a two-dimensional sprite. Um, now, in theory, you can get a, you can get along with just having their names, but that's really not a very good solution for readability's sake. Uh, seeing them is much better. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a three-dimensional uh, interface that pops up when we hit the tab button. So the first thing we need to do is we need to understand how we're going to go about doing that. And the answer is fairly straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to start by creating a new layer. So we're going to go and go down into our space inventory. These are our inventory objects. And you can see that we've got a list of layers that we're allowed to use here. We're going to go ahead and add a new layer, and this is going to be the menu layer. Now the key here is that things which are on the menu layer are going to be invisible um, to every camera except the menu camera, and the menu camera can only see things that are going to be on the menu layer. That way we won't have to worry about putting our 3D objects out in space or anything like that. So how are we going to assign these to the menu layer? Well, we're going to go ahead and just set it up so that they and their children are all on the menu layer. And now we're going to go to the main camera, and we're going to change the culling mask so that it excludes the menu layer. Right? So now we hit play, and we don't see any change, but watch, I'll summon things out of the sky. And before you think that they don't exist, let's go ahead and go over into Scene View, track them down. So nothing there, something is there. The menu layer is invisible in the game view, see? We had to get it exact. And that's the trick we're going to be using, but that does mean that we're going to have to change it so that when we instantiate those, um, they are switched over to being another layer. So we're going to go over to our, what is it, uh, player IO. Here it is. We say game object hab equals instantiate, blah, 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 blah. We're actually going to go ahead and say hab dot uh, layer. Uh, I have to, I don't remember whether or not I have to recursively set this. Is there a set layer? No. Uh, I think I have to recursively set it, so we're going to create a function for that. First, let's just go ahead and try it. The problem is that uh, the parent object isn't what we want to set to be on layer 0. We want to set the child object to be on layer 0. Yeah, nothing doing. So if we look at these, we're on the layer menu for... The drop depot itself is on layer default, but the visuals are still on layer menu. So we just have to create a recursive uh, function to do all that work. So the way we do this is we say obj.layer equals zero. Oh. obj.layer equals layer, and then we say for in a equals zero, a is less than obj.transform obj child count a plus plus, and we say set layer obj.transform get child a dot game object comma layer. And so that will recursively set the layer for the object and then all of its child objects. So we go here and we just say set layer hab zero. We conk. Drop some stuff. And you can see we see them fine now. So that is how we're going to handle that. But how are we going to make it so that we can see them uh, on the menu screen? Well, we're going to create a menu camera, which will uh, only exist when we want it to. 
So the key for doing that is to create a new camera object. It's gotten loud like it always does whenever I try and record anything. So this is going to be our menu camera. Uh, hopefully they're done with all their noise. Now we don't want our menu camera to be ortho, uh, to be a perspective. We want it to be orthographic. And that way we don't have to worry about how far away an object is from the camera. We can just have it, um, uh, we can just worry about the x, z, co x, y coordinates. So we're going to put this just at 0, 0, 0 for the sake of simplicity. And we're going to set it to be depth only. So now when we hit play, we're going to have uh, this camera is working, but we can't see it. And the reason we can't see it is because it has a lower uh, depth. So if we increase the depth, you can see that there's now a giant spot in the middle of our view. And it just went away. And that's because the, uh, the chunk that it could see before is now gone. As it loaded up the chunks, they, uh, they, it, it's gone to being inside of them. So this camera view that we have here doesn't see anything because all of the chunks are outside of its purview. Um, if we wanted to see it, we could move it up like so. And now, just to show you that the camera works, you can see that we have the camera is seeing us from its static position. All right, so how are we going to make it so this camera can only see menu items? Well, first off, we have to name it again. For some reason, that didn't stick. And then we're going to change it so that instead of the culling mask being everything, it's just the menu layer. Now when we hit play, the menu camera no longer exists. It doesn't understand that there is anything to... It doesn't understand that it should be... Uh, that it should. It does not have anything to render, so it's not rendering anything. Uh, because there is no item of type um, menu. But if we hit pause and we drag in one of these drop depots and we stick it near the camera... Let's... Uh, manually put it in front of the camera like this. I think that's in front. You can see that we can now, I guess we're not quite far enough forward. Where are you, camera? Why can't you see this? Oh, I dragged it the wrong direction. Durr. Oh, uh, need to drag it that direction and this direction. There we go. No. Oh, it fell. <laughs> okay, uh, try that again. Sorry to be slow about this. I just want to get, make sure you absolutely understand exactly what we're doing. Because what we're doing is we're making it so that the menu camera can see these guys. So there, you can see that one thing. And if we switch over to game view, you can see how that floats in the sky. That's because the menu camera is being overlaid on top of our primary camera. And all the menu camera can see is this object. Now the menu camera obviously doesn't need to render every time. It only needs to render while the menu is open. Similarly, we need to be able to pull objects into existence to view on the menu camera without uh, uh, having them show up to anyone else. So what the first step in that is going to be is we're going to take this inventory script and we're going to move it over to the menu camera. Where's my paste button? No? It doesn't like me? There we go. Um, and that'll give it, so that'll make the menu camera the actual inventory object holder. Um, and we, what we can do is we can set the inventory object class to understand that it's on a camera. And that means that it will always be on a camera and will understand that that is the camera that we need to show or or hide or put things relative to. Okay? So now we're going to go ahead and public bool showing inventory equals false. And here in update, we're going to go ahead and check for the tab key. Now this is a kind of blunt force way to do it, but that's okay. So uh, set showing inventory not show, I'll just say toggle show inventory public void toggle show inventory 
showing inventory equals not showing inventory camera dot enabled equals showing inventory. There you go. So we're going to go ahead and select that camera so we can see it and take a look. Keep your eye on the birdie. Uh, in particular, you're going to want to watch that check mark and this check mark. So I hit tab and they both changed. See? Of course, right now there's nothing in the camera to see, so that's not any of any value. And there's something I forgot to do, and that is remove the audio listener. Um, otherwise, it'll continuously complain. So we got rid of the audio listener, and there we go. However, the camera starts as uh, enabled, so let's go ahead and start the camera as disabled, and that way it'll be synced up right from the beginning. All right. Now in the next episode, I'm going to be spawning 3D objects into that camera, and I may actually release that episode today because this episode's a little bit light on the actual functional content. We'll see.